Well, thank you for joining us today for our noontime prayer. I'm here with uh, Jeff Stanton, and uh, if you have not yet sent in a prayer request, go ahead and do that, and Jeff will relay it to me. And uh, we'll just join in agreement today for all God's co covenant promises to manifest in lives. And I'm going to begin in prayer right now. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, together through this technology with saints all across whoever's watching this, anywhere in this world, incredible, incredible opportunity. And we thank you, Father, for your promise that where two or three are gathered, that you're right here in our midst. And as we agree that it's, it's going to be done for us and we're agreeing for healing, we're agreeing for restoration and salvation, we're agreeing, Father, for uh, uh, moving in lives with the light of truth in the midst of darkness, the gross darkness that's covering this earth. And we thank you, Father, for your light and your people who are arising and shining right now. And I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, it's been on my heart uh, to talk about faith. And um, faith's involved in our prayers. Faith's involved in life is about faith. And I, I, I think there's been some misunderstandings about faith, and I want to just take a few minutes and just talk about faith today. Faith is the currency of, of God's currency. If you want a covenant promise from God operating in your life, it takes faith in order for that to come into your life. Faith is what's exchanged for all the covenant promises of God. Now, we know the definition of faith at Hebrews 11. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it's the substantiation of our white-hot expectation. It's the evidence of an unseen reality. And we know from the, the uh, uh, quintessential hallmark scripture of faith in Mark 11, verses 22 through 24, Jesus said, have faith in God, or more accurately, have God's kind of faith. Most assuredly, I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that whatever he says, he will have. And he will have whatever he says. Therefore, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. So there are two hinges to faith, the door of faith. Number one is believing, and number two is this action or the speaking behind it. So I, I, I want to explain this a little more because you've all heard what I've just said. You've heard it before. And sometimes we think we know things and, and uh, uh, we don't see the results. And I want us to see faith results on purpose. And so I want you to understand that faith, everything about faith starts with a kingdom principle. Now, a kingdom principle is when God did something or declared something for the first time, it set a principle that lasts throughout eternity. And one of the principle behind faith is in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, and it's seed time and harvest. Yes, that is the kingdom principle behind faith, seed time and harvest. So let me just briefly go through this process of faith, a faith a manifestation on purpose. So faith starts with seed, a revelation from the word. Now, what I'm holding up right here, are the scriptures and the scriptures reveal the word who is Jesus Christ, the logos. And from the logos, we get a word from the word, which is called a rhema, a word. Holy spirit speaks to us. And that's how faith comes. 
Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the rhema, word of God. We also know, uh, uh, Paul said in Galatians 5 and 6, that faith works by love. So faith and love are inextricably joined together. <laughs> without, there can't be one without the other. It comes by hearing, and it works by love. That's Look, this is, this is fundamental. You have to understand these things. So we have a revelation. The first pro in the process is the seed, the revelation of the word, the promise of God. And it comes to us, and we, the, first, the next step is believing that word. Believing it. Remember the two hinges on the door of faith from Mark 11, 22, it, 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 22 through 24? It's, it's believing in your heart and speaking with your mouth. Believing is the first hinge. So you have to believe it, not doubting. Now, here's, I want you to understand that when you believe it, you conceive it. You, there's a conception that happened. It's just like becoming pregnant with the Word. You, you, you conceive it in spirit form within your heart. Now let's go back to Hebrews 11 and verse 3. It says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are not made of things that are visible. So what God had in his framed within him was this picture of what he was going to create the world. And so we're created in his likeness and image. And so when we believe something, we conceive it. And within that conception, there's a frame within us. And in that frame, there has to be a vision. There has to be something in the frame. And the vision is that you have to see this promise operating in your life. It's called vision. <laughs> when you see it, and we know the importance of vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says, for without a vision, people perish. Or another translation say, people go without restraint. Well, we need direction. We need a vision. We need uh, th that picture of our promise framed within us. That's what happens when you believe it. Now you must visualize it working in your life. Now, that is key right there. Visualizing it working. <laughs> this vision situation, um, you, you, we, we can't rely on sea level thinking and sea level vision. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, For we do not look at the things that can be seen, but at the things that cannot be seen. For the things that can be seen are temporal, temporary. It's the things that cannot be seen that are eternal. So you're not looking at faith at what can be seen right here because we don't see it. You, you can't rely on that. That's the carnal mind. That's the world. That's, they, they only know what they see, and they only believe half that. So uh, what we see is in the spirit realm. We've been given spiritual eyes to see. And what we've seen is, and we've believed, we, we, we've seen that vision operating in our lives. We're, we've got that, that picture right here of it working. And now we have to act on it. And part of that acting on it is the speaking hinge from Mark 11. The speaking, we believed, we visualized it working, we've, we see it, and now we're speaking it into existence. So what we're doing there is that we're, we're, we're transferring those covenant promises of God that are yes and amen, 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God in him are yea, yes, and in him amen to the glory of God through us. So it has to come through us. So this is the, the process of faith now. Uh, stay with me. It's, it's, it has to come through you. Well, you've got it right here. But now how do we get it out? We get it out by speaking it. By Romans 4, 17, Father's language, calling those things which are not as though they were. So they become. That's the process. And it comes through us. That's how faith works. It works through you. And you're the person that, that determines the amount you're going to get of, of, of this promise by the amount of his faith that's operating in you. 
You see, Hebrews uh, 12, verse 2 says that Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. It's his faith. Glory to God. And I trust him. And the more I trust him, the more that faith I have to see his promises manifest. I know I'm going through this uh, very rapidly, but I, I want you to I want you to hear this and understand it. And I want you I'm going to I'm going to take us to uh, Luke chapter 17. And uh, in verse five, it says the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. I've had people ask me, how, how, how can I get more faith? How do I increase my faith? Well, you not have to know the process. And it sounds like here, the G, and Jesus went into this, this, this parable, and he said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. And then he goes on, and... Which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? Question mark. Would you say that to your servant before he's fixing you something to eat? No, no, you wouldn't do that. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk and afterwards you will eat and drink? Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Well, what's that all about? It's part of the process. That servant, that servant is your, are your words. Your words you see, when you're speaking forth that revelation, that vision, the seed, you are planting the seed. And you are planting it in by sending it forth. That seed are your words. And your words contain the power to manifest just like that, bulb, that, little, that little mustard seed. It's not the size of the seed. It's the content of the seed. It's what's in it. That counts. And it has the power within it to produce the result. And that's what your words are. And when you're speaking forth that revelation, that that's what's already exists within you, and you're, 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 what you're doing is taking it from the eternal spirit realm into the natural realm. You're planting it into the earth. Glory to God. And you're going to get a harvest from your seed. And this is faith. This is how faith results happen. Now understand that the enemy of our soul, those rulers of darkness that are already relegated in chains of darkness, don't want to see this work. And so there's going to be a confrontation of your faith. And normally that happens right here between your ears. Because if you don't see it immediately, you think, well, it doesn't work for me. No, no, this is part of the process. Know that there's going to be a contradiction. Often, the very opposite thing happens than what you have believed and spoken into the earth. Know there's going to be a confrontation, but you have to resist the enemy. You have to stand firm on the truth of God's Word. Many people don't see faith manifestations because they give up. Too quickly. There's a kingdom principle of eventuality that goes along with faith. And it's Galatians 6, 9. Do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not, if you don't give up. There's an eventuality in faith. And I want you to understand that. This is a, it's a done deal. Once, you, <laughs> once you've got the revelation... That's God's will for that to happen. But it has to be processed through you, through His faith operating in you. I want you to understand this. This is not some roulette table. This is not some gamble. This is a sure thing. But you have to be in the process in partnership with Lord Jesus Christ. It's His faith that does the, man the manifestations. But it's through you. That's the key to this thing. And so... This, this principle of eventuality, you know, it's been several years ago now, but I was kind of complaining to the Lord. Lord, I, you know, I know this, this is, 
you've shown me these things are mine and, and it's been all these this time I'm, I'm, and, and, and he kind of just slapped me around a little bit and he said Wade he said when the reaping is later the harvest is greater and I want you to understand that that's a faith principle when the reaping is later the harvest is greater the firmer your stand the more you resist the enemy because some of you need some big things in your life. You're, you're, you're believing for whole families and, and whole cities to being saved. When you're, when you're standing, when you're standing by faith, you've seen it. It's a revelation to you from the Almighty God that, that comes straight from the Logos. It, you're standing on it and standing on it. And it seems like forever. Don't be weary in well-doing. Because when the reaping is later, the harvest is greater. Let that settle in for a minute. Glory to God. That's the reality. Now, I want to give you five principles that I'm going to end on here, and then we're going to our prayers. There are five seed faith principles you need to understand. Number one, your seed, that revelation, that word from the word, that, that seed is the only influence that you have over your future. Should I say that again? Your seed is the only influence you have over your future. That revelation that is processed through you and planted is the only influence you have over your future. Number two, that seed, and this goes right along with the first one, that seed is a photograph of your future. When you see that seed, when you visualize that seed operating, that revelation operating, when you visualize it, it's framed. That's a photograph of your future. Number three, the purpose of seed is for the harvest. The purpose of seed is for the harvest. In other words, don't eat your seed. Don't just, 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 you know, put it in a sack and forget it. <laughs> Act on it. The purpose of seed is for the harvest. And number four, the seed that leaves your life, whether it leaves your hand, it leaves your mouth as words, it leaves your life in one way or another through action. That seed that leaves your life goes into your future where it is multiplied back to you. Now, this brings up another kingdom principle of the principle of reproduction. Every seed produces after its own kind. I want you to understand that. Every seed produces after its own kind. If you want friends, you need to be friendly. If you need finance, now listen to me carefully. If you need finance, you need to be, if you need money, you need to plant pennies to get dollars back. Every seed produces after its own kind. Whatever you plant is going to come back in the same type. So if you want corn, you don't plant beans. You plant corn. Is this making sense? It's, it's, a, it's so simple that sometimes people lose the, the subtlety of this. So understand what I'm saying. Every seed produces after its own kind. And you, when it leaves your life, it multiplies back to you. When I look at this from a financial standpoint, and, I, and look, your finances are all about seed faith. Look, your income, my income, does not depend on the money people give me. That's not it at all. That's a byproduct. It doesn't depend on what your employer pays you or the government. Your income depends on what you give, what you plant. And that influences others to give back to you. It's Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men 
pour into your bosom. Number, the last one, number five, that I'm going to give, then we'll get into the prayers, is, now listen to this one, protect your heart. Protect your heart. For it's out of the proceeds of the heart, the mouth speaks, that seeds are planted. Your, your heart is a seed bin. Your heart is where your seed is, is, is sourced from. You receive the revelation, you begin to speak the revelation. But here's the thing, you have to protect your eye gates and your ear gates because all that settles in your heart. And in Matthew uh, uh, 12, it's in, in verse 34, it says, For out of the proceeds of the heart the mouth speaks, and you're sowing seed. And those words, death and life, are in the power of the tongue. We want life, and we want multiplied life coming back to us through this, this process of faith manifestations, seed time and harvest. And we're going to go into this, the reality of this right here as we're praying for these needs today. So um, I hope that was beneficial to somebody. You might have to, to rewind this thing and look at this again and, and understand this process, this, this, this faith manifestation, and understand the steps involved in this. Don't, don't, don't eliminate any of them. Don't, uh, look, most of you have not heard about the visualization aspect of this thing. You need to see it working. And then the, the clearer that picture is, the, the more concise can be your declaration, how you plant that seed. And, and that seed is a word of God that's coming out of your mouth. Glory to God. So we've got our, our prayer list. And the first group are the cancers, those that are suffering from one stage or another of cancer. And I've got Angie. I've got Ann, Arlene. Becky, Benny, Bill, Bobby, Bridget, Carson, uh, Christopher, Connie, David, Denny, Diane, Donna, Fonda, uh, and Fran, Jana, Jimmy, John, Julie, Kearney, Kevin, Kim, Kimmy. Larry, Les, Linda, Lynn, Larry, Megan, another Megan, Mike, Nora, Norm, Pam, Rachel, Raquel, Richard, Ronnie, Sophia, Susan, Sue, Todd, and Pastor Tom. So, Father, right now, do you have anybody else yes, for cancer? Do, uh, Wade, we want to add uh, Judy. Recently been diagnosed with kidney on one of her, or cancer on one of her kidneys. Judy. Yes. Okay. Well, Father, we're ta we take these names right, these people right here that we've mentioned, and others that are out there right now, that their names are being spoken out loud right now by those that are watching. And we're declaring that by the stripes that you bore, cancer was eradicated. They were healed. And so I take a, I place a demand on these bodies, their immune systems, to fight off every, every uh, uh, virus, everything that's attacking their bodies right now, causing tumors and, and cancers and cells to multiply out of order. And I'm saying to those, those cells right now, you must come in line. You will rebel against the Word of God no longer. And I thank you, Father, for that power to destroy the works of the devil that's being released right now, this anointing for healing that's already flowing. And people are saying, yes, that's me. I'm receiving it right now. It's already mine. I'll not be denied any longer from my healing from this thing. And I thank you for it, Father, right now in Jesus' name. Autoimmune disease. Loretta and Ruth, Alzheimer's. Noah and Abby, their children with Crohn's disease. Tom with lupus, Rhonda with Graves' disease, uh, David, Cheryl, Brenda, Lindy, and an entire family with Parkinson's, Malena with Hashimoto, Tina with cirrhosis, 
Renee with Barrett's esophagus, Jackie with MS, and Jessica with mitochondrial disease. We've got Bryce, Chad, Charles, Colby, Derek, Jamie, Jeff, Joe, Larry, Mark, Mary, Norm, Randy, and Virgie with diabetes. And anybody else you know with an autoimmune disease. Now, let me describe what an autoimmune disease is. It's, it's where the body wants to destroy itself from the inside out. And there's a root to this thing. And the root is self-hatred and self-rejection that can come into somebody's life even in the womb. And so we're going to uproot that right now. We're going to uproot that mess. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Because you are loved. You are loved. You're not rejected. You're the Lord, God Almighty, loves you. And he proved it. He proved it by the cross and the resurrection and sending Holy Spirit to live within you. He proved his love. So don't believe the lie any longer. We're uprooting that mess right now. We're re renouncing it, operating in our lives. I renounce that thing right now in Jesus' name in lives. It has no more. It has, And we repent right now of, of, of seeing that thing operating in lives. I you can say that with me. I repent right now of having that operating in my life, being deceived like this. And I'm receiving the healing balm right now. I'm commanding that thing out of my life once and for all, and I'm receiving the healing balm of Gilead right now. Jesus Christ, his stripes, healing and flowing with love, flowing with love, filling that void right now, that those roots have been eliminated from lives right now. And I thank you, Father. You know, the medical profession says you can't heal an autoimmune disease. You can only manage it. And I say, no, no, the root is gone. And I thank you, Father, right now for healing and perfect restoration. And when you restore, it's better than it was originally. And I thank you for doing that, Father, in these lives. In Jesus' name. Been, uh, Diana was in an accident in rehab right now. We pray for accelerated healing for her body. Uh, Elizabeth with precancerous cells, um, Mary, Denny, Zandra, Janice, Dave, Jeanette, Martha, Janice with pain, Shirley with breathing, David with an abscess tooth, Constance with mobility, Kim with heart issues, serious heart issues, We've got uh, Jaina, who's having a procedure. Ron with surgery coming up. Claire with the procedure. Kathy recuperating from surgery. Marcy from knee surgery. Calvin had cancer removed. Connie having a knee replacement. Tom, surgery to remove lung cancer. And another Tom with a, a prostate surgery. So, Father, for all these and others right now that's being called out right now, their names being called out. Father, we're praying for an acceleration of their covenant promise manifesting in their lives of healing, divine health flowing right now into their bodies. I thank you, Father, for medical technology. I thank you, Father, for the skill of surgeons, and I pray they be directed in these surgeries. I pray, Father, for these healings to, to manifest in lives. And we declare that so right now in Jesus' name. We're in agreement right now, Father, that these, 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 these bodies are healed and they're moving forth, carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ and the healing power of Almighty God into others' lives. And I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. For Tiffany, Kaylee, Rachel, Michelle, Jen, Tiffany, and Mercedes, we're praying, Father, for you to just drop into their bodies right now, fertility, to conceive, and for their husbands, Father. Let, this, let, let, them have, let them receive the desires of their hearts. Healthy baby, healthy pregnancies carried to a healthy delivery. And I thank you, Father, for doing that in their lives, demonstrating your love tangibly 
with a baby. Thank you, Father. Yeah, we've got lots of prayer requests today. Um, we'll pray for salvation. And I've got names on here, and you've got, you've got fam people in your family and friends. Uh, I'm going to start with Julie right now. And Alice, Ann. I'm going to sit in my family, best family right now. Uh, Vern's family right now. Bryce. Brittany, Cassandra, Ernest, Greg, Gretchen, Hannah, Hunter, Jonathan, Joshua, Lance, Marilyn, Sons, Mark and Mark, Naomi, Paul, Quentin, Randy, Stephen, Todd, Vern, and Vincent. And Thelma's had it on her heart for, for these young, young people, children, to receive the Lord and not be deceived any longer. So, Father, for these names, and again, for those that are being called out right now, those are being called out by those that are watching right now, they're calling our names out right now. We're using the keys of the kingdom, and we're binding their feet to paths of righteousness. They're, we're binding their minds to the mind of Christ. We're binding their destinies to that which was preordained before the foundation of the world, that they would be in Christ. And we're loosing them from every evil influence of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. From every destructive strategy and tactic that the enemy has to steal, kill, and destroy their lives from every deceitful program from the realm of darkness that have them blinded to the light of truth. We're, 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 we're shedding the light of God's truth into their lives right now. And I thank you, Father, for sending messengers across their path, messengers of the good news, of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he's done already done for them by becoming their sin and declaring them innocent, by becoming <laughs> the curse of the law, that they don't have to live in poverty and in darkness, but they could come out into their destiny in Him and live in the power of Holy Spirit and see kingdom results on a, a moment by moment with joy and peace, knowing that they are innocent and righteous in God's eyes. And I thank you, Father, for doing that. I thank you for using every person that's watching right now in this, this, this mode of being a messenger of your good news and demonstrating it and living it and speaking it forth. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Uh, Janet and Sharon have asked for prayer for anxiety, summer, uh, for depression, along with Brian who uh, he lost his twin brother to suicide. So, Father, right now, for both depression and anxiety, both are symptoms of fear. And we come against that spirit of fear right now with the perfect love of Jesus Christ that's already been poured out. And I pray, Father, that it would be poured out in these lives that cast out perfect love, casting out all fear and all of fear's symptoms and consequences. And I thank you, Father, again, for that light of truth shining in the darkness that fear promotes and, I, and depression. And I thank you, Father, for truth reigning in these lives. In Jesus' name. We pray for the Day family uh, that lost a loved one and aunt, and for Janice and Gracie. And, yes, we're going to pray for the Tate family that lost a family friend, a pet. And we thank you, Father, for the comfort of Holy Spirit in these losses. And I pray, Father, that this period of grieving will be short and that they will come to, to, to remember their loved ones in, in, in the way that you would have them remember them and see them living with you right now. Thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Uh, let me see what else we have here. 
prayer for finances. And Naomi was on this list, and I'm going to include anyone else is, is, is looking for better jobs or jobs and businesses. And Father, right now I'm, 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 I'm releasing a kingdom principle again of seed time and harvest. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, that, that those who have sown, I pray for that due season being accelerated in their lives. I'm praying right now, Father, for, for your favor and blessing to flow with hundredfold returns into their lives. I thank you, Father, for this, these, these, a desire to know your kingdom principles, that you don't have a money tree you shake, but you deal in a kingdom principle of seed time and harvest, and that every seed produces after its own kind. So whatever we need, Father, whatever we need, you've already given it to us. You've given us all things pertaining to life and godliness, but you deal in seed form. So, Father, help us to identify the seed and where to sow it for the accelerated return that you've promised in our lives. And I declare this so for those that, that are looking for new jobs and businesses and for finances in general. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you've already provided everything everything we need. You've already done it through your finished work. So let us have eyes to see and ears to hear. In Jesus' name. I pray for favor for Marie and Holly and Chris with uh, legal issues. You've already poured that out, Father. Let them be receivers of your, of your blessing and your favor right now in Jesus' name. Um. Uh, Father, I pray for a continuation of this awakening. I pray for an acceleration and an enlargement of this awakening that's going on with these young people in these universities, in these cities, and even in countries right now where, where there's an outpouring, of where you're just, Holy Spirit's just tapping people on the shoulder and says, I am alive, I'm here, I'm here, and, and, and they're seeing it. And I pray, Father, for this awakening to turn into a, a, tr a true revival with, with a demonstration of the ability of Holy Spirit. Lord, set the platform up with gifts of healings and working of miracles. Let people see the, the reality of Christ, Christ being manifest through Holy Spirit and lives being transformed. Let this go on in our cities right here in Connersville, right here in this region, right here in, 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 in Fayette County, in Franklin County, in Union County, Wayne County, over into Ohio and Butler and, and, and Hamilton and Montgomery. Father, this whole region, let us, let us be awakened by Holy Spirit. I come against every spirit of every religious spirit that would hold back Holy Spirit's abilities. I thank you, Father, for moving in lives like never before, awakening churches, speaking forth, speaking forth, prophesying to dry bones to come alive. And I thank you, Father, for the bone storms that are happening even now. As, as prophecies going forth, the word of God's going forth, putting life into bones as Holy Spirit breathes the very breath of God into fellowships and churches that will impact communities and st even states. And I thank you for it, Father. Moving, moving, moving right now. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Yes, Jeff. Uh, yes, we have a prayer request from Romy that Mark's hand would be healed. She didn't leave any other details other than that. All right. Well, Father, we thank you for doing that for Mark, that his hand is being restored even now, miracle restoration even now. And flexibility and pain be gone right now. Flexibility, come back and pain be gone. And we thank you for doing that, Father. And I thank you for favor flowing to them. In every aspect of their lives, Father, let them see your favor and let them be purveyors of your favor, giving it out to others and blessings to others. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Let it, let it impact that area they are in right now in Louisiana and beyond. Let it impact and let them be examples of what you can do in lives. In Jesus' name. Any other requests, Jeff? Well, praise God. Well, I hope that our time together has, is, has been a blessing to you and, and, and will be a productive in your life where you will see faith manifestations on purpose. 
and you will see answers to prayer coming. That we're entering into a time right now, and I'm prophesying this to you right now, we're entering into a time that will be called pray and duck in later years. We're coming into that time as soon as you have, have made that declaration. You're speaking that, that from that vision, that seed that's in you that's already been conceived, and you're speaking that forth, that declaration. As soon as you release that, you better duck because the answer's already on the way. Thank you for it, Father. Got another what else? prayer come in for Buffy. Uh, she has been in the hospital. And she is looking for healing and restoration. Well, we declare it so for Buffy right now. And Jeff and I are in agreement right now. And so is Buffy that she's going to be restored to perfect health. And it's coming immediately. She's already has it. It's already been done. We thank you, Father, for that manifestation in her body and in her life. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. I pray that what's going on here today will have an eternal effect on your life and those around you because of the faith manifestations in your life. And I pray that you will never again be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today. And you be blessed to be a blessing. Join us on Monday. And we're going to be continuing with the power gifts of Holy Spirit. And we're going to be talking about gifts of healings and the working of miracles on Monday at 6. So be with us back then. And... Again, be blessed to be a blessing. God bless you. Amen.